over here. Say hi, Mr. Seurat. <laughs> hey, greetings, everybody. Everybody. Hi. 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 All right. Uh, I'm Gideon Seurat, you know, um, director, producer. Got a company called Clairvoyant Pictures and Entertainment. And uh, basically, you know what I'm saying, um, when y'all see me, I'm basic, I'm truth man. You know, I'm not here to give you no lies. I'm here to give you straight truth. Give you straight, the realness, game. You know, that's what the world is, is game. You know, the world's not gonna prepare you for when you get out there for the game. So somebody who knows it gotta kinda pull your coattail to it a little bit and try to share as much as they know and you build on that. It's y'all job to take the information and build on it and stack it. Keep okay. So what do y'all have interests? What's, what is a career interest that the I both of y'all have? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's just something. <laughs> Okay. What was that? You want to be a you Fortnite, Fortnite player? <laughs> Fortnite shit will be ninja. Right? He's a fan. Okay. Say it again. Okay. I want to be a fashion designer. Okay. Okay. I want to be a lawyer. Word, word. I want to be in music. Okay. Me? Mm -hmm. I want to be an OBGYN. Okay. Good morning, there. I want to be an athletic cheerleader, not athletic cheerleader, but a uh, professional cheerleader, and, and I want to do, yeah, and I want to do, uh, I want to be a lawyer. Okay. Cheerleader and lawyer. Yeah, I got to have oh. backup, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so who's going to backup? My backup going to be a uh, lawyer. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Good. I either want to be an engineer or a professional musician. Okay. And you got another one. I want to be a preacher. <laughs> See, let, let me show you something about preaching. You know, that's one of the most powerful. You can't even call it a profession. It's a, it's a calling, and it's one of the most powerful things you could do. Look at that. Do you see their congregations? Do you see how many people are, are listening to them? So being a preacher is the most powerful vocation you can have, period, in life. You know what I'm saying? The most high, his son was a preacher. You understand? So uh, I, I salute that calling. You know, I salute that, that goal. I say this, right? Um, Whatever you want to be, you was born with it. You was born when you came to this planet, it was in your heart. You understand what I'm saying? It was in your heart when you came here, my man. Everything that you ever wanted to do, you got the ability to do it. And that's not just positive speaking. You actually have the ability to do it. And that's why everybody, I love the fact that everybody said they wanted to do something different. We had some similarities, but you ain't supposed to have the same dream as this person, or this person, or this person. Because that's what your value is. That's what you offer to the planet. And slick game real fast, and value is money. That's it. That's it. You know what I'm saying? A penny is worth how much? One cent. One cent. That's the value of that penny. So all you're doing is exchanging one value for another. That's wealth. That's power. That's how you build wealth. Do biology and English, double major, and Spanish minor on a pre-med track. So I was going to be a doctor, but while I was in school, I also had a love for the stage. So I also enjoyed like making people laugh, um, playing a character and getting into like theater as well. So for me, it had been the same two things throughout the whole of my life. In most classrooms, you're gonna have somebody that's real quiet, like the laid back person in the classroom, or you're gonna have somebody who's basically like, for lack of better words, I'm trying to watch my language, but the crap starter in the classroom. You understand? But those people are special people. Those people are the most special people because they, 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 their, their creativity is is in focus you understand what i'm saying they, they kind of already know where they want to be you know albert einstein said something like he said that nothing affected my my uh my learning but my education so he already knew what he wanted to do interesting thing with me like when i came to atlanta i wanted to be like everybody else a rapper like everybody think they can rap you know what i'm saying so i came to atlanta trying to start a, a, a music career and so for us that was like the quickest way to get out your situation you feel me? Was to basically be a rapper, cause you ain't have to have no. I ain't gonna say you gotta have no education, but you don't have to have no college degree. You can have felonies, you can have all of that, and you can still be successful in the music industry. Period. I mean, come on, Fifty Cent, that dude went to jail, he got shot, and he's he running businesses. He's running businesses. So what I'm trying to say to you is that I thought that was gonna be my way out, but like I said, it, it switched and my focus changed to directing. And um, I was staying over here off Memorial Drive in one of them, man, them apartments. Them hotels is jacked up. I'm telling you, jacked up. You know what I'm saying? And I was staying in them hotels out there. And I was just like, this is going to, it just came to me like filmmaking. It's going to be my way about it, this thing. 
you know, and so I didn't have no no training in it, no knowledge in it, no skills in it, but I'm gonna tell y'all a little se a secret again. Once you find out what you're supposed to do on this planet, the entire universe gonna back it. It's the only thing that the universe is going to back. It's what you're supposed to do. Whenever you're doing something you're not supposed to do, is when you're gonna start taking L's, you're gonna start getting failures, stuff not gonna work out. You know? I mean, you can call it karma, but it's almost like you spitting against the wind. You ever been driving in, in the car and roll down the window and you try to spit outside, but the wind blowing and what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Right, so, you know, it's almost like if you swim it too, if the water is flowing this way, and you swim in this way, you're gonna have a whole lot harder time swimming because you're flowing against the water. And that's how existence works. So once you find out what you're supposed to do, you wanna be a preacher, you wanna be a lawyer, you wanna be a lawyer, you wanna be a cheerleader, and you got backups, okay? When you find out exactly what you're supposed to do, and you talk to the most high about it, he be like, oh, I'll give you this stamp, I'm with it. No, when he tell you you with it, it's gonna flow, it's gonna flow. I had no training and nothing I'm doing. I got my film show in Hollywood. I'm shaking hands with celebrities and people I ain't never seen before. I'm like, yo, this junk is blowing my mind. And all I did was just do what I was supposed to do. So now I'm getting ready to set my stuff up where I'm finna talk with these doggone millionaires and get my next film made. But come on fam, I ain't went to the same neighborhood as y'all lived in, went to the same schools. I ain't went to this school, I went to alternative school. <laughs> you know, so I bounced up out of that and I'm still moving forward. All right, red shirt, my friend. What's your name? Jeremy. Jeremy. Um, so when I was younger, I wanted to get into acting and I was like in like plays in church and stuff like that. And I would do stuff like that. But as I got like older, um, it was like, it was kind of difficult because I wanted to like go the next step, like get into like a company and start like doing actual stuff. But it was a little difficult because like my mom didn't have that much money to pay them and it was just a bunch of stuff and we really couldn't do it. So like how can I like get back into that without having to like with avoiding the struggles that will come with it financially? I think that is a great question. Um, and that's kind of what I was talking about when I said that, you know, I apart from loving having a love for the stage, I also do journalism so my journalism aspect is something that I have control over in other words create your own content in other words everybody's watching YouTube right now like not to say that everybody's gonna blow up on YouTube but what that does once you do have stuff that you filmed like you could get a group of friends together create like I don't know just stuff that funny stuff that happens as you walking home or in the lunchroom or and just recreate like a skit and upload it you know, and just stuff like that is gonna help people. Cause even if you just sent a link to an agency with showing that, that's, that's called a reel. That's like an acting reel. And they'll see you and how you're acting in that. And they, they, that's part of your work, your resume in other words. So not only are you having fun creating your content, but your content is becoming your resume. So that's, that's the way I would encourage to do it because that's how I'm doing it. And that's how I ended up in, um, I was in Stomp the Yard 2 as one of the sorority girls. I was, I've done Meet the Browns. Uh, well, I was a flight attendant in Meet the Browns, Tyler Perry's Meet the Browns. Just stuff like that, I can actually send it in to these places that are looking for actors. Because they're looking for kid actors too, you know that. So, I, I mean, just... I don't, I don't like to say piggyback, I say spirit back. You feel me? So I'm, I'm a spirit back on what she like just said, you know, is that there are child actors, you know? You see a lot of, you know, they have scenes in movies where you got kids and even babies playing parts. But one thing to know that the entertainment industry in general is one of the most difficult industries on the planet to get in because of the clout that comes with it. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Everybody would be doing it. So. The first thing you got to do is love what you're doing. That's got to trump every everything else you're doing. It's got to trump the money. It's got to trump the resources. It's got to trump all of that. When you love it to the heart, you'll do exactly what she's saying. Like you get a couple of your friends and you go out there and you shoot, you shoot a little film or something with you acting in it and put it online. YouTube is free for now. They finna start charging people, but for now it's free. Mm -hmm. So so use that and continue to have fun with it. And what will happen? You see situations like this. It's called six degrees of separation you know what i'm saying don't phase out on me right now six degrees of, sep of separation is, is basically is you're one step or two steps from whoever you want to be around because mm -hmm. everything is connected 
Everything is connected. Everything is connected. So you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. Right now, it's crazy. I'm one, two, three, four people away from Obama. Like, I don't know him personally. He wouldn't notice me in the crowd. But I know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows him. And that's what I'm talking about. Talk to people and love what you're doing. And the struggle going to come with it. The struggle going to come with it. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's the price you pay for it. It's the price you pay for it. You're going to have to give to get it. You know? You, you had a question too. You've been waiting, right? Yes. Um, yeah. Have, like, have y'all like shot or filmed any movies? Yeah. Um, I got basically like six films out. Um, they on Amazon. I'm getting ready to do my next film. It's going to be on Netflix. It's called Enter the Mac. <laughs> it's basically talking about a mind frame you need to have when you're going into the industry. Like, they don't, they don't train a lot of cats to go from the mud to being around people who don't even look like you. You understand what I'm saying? How do you articulate and have a conversation with somebody who ain't even from your background? White person, a Jewish person, or whoever, and are you gonna get up there and say, hey man, I got the film, get ready to come out with my mind. Nah! And you don't have to talk through your nasal, all European-ish like. But you, you need to conduct yourself like you respect yourself. You know, when you go and talk to them people, because if they see you don't respect yourself, they're going to be like, all right, we want you to do three shows for us and um, we're going to pay you $100. Because you don't even know your value. So to, to answer your question, I got six films out. Most of them on Amazon. I got another one getting ready to put on, on Netflix, you know. And she's the star actress in this film I got here called White Folks, which was, uh, you know, a uh, crime thriller. And, huh? Y'all have like any like paparazzi or something? Man, no, but I'm glad. <laughs> you mean like if there's people that just be trying to like film us all the time? Yeah. Oh, not I'm, yet. <laughs> I mean, I, I hired my own cameraman to come shoot or whatever, but I got, somebody asked me to be a paparazzi. And it basically works very jacked up. It's like somebody take a camera, follow me road scroll. It's like somebody take a camera like this, and you see how I'm all up in your face like this, and then I'm getting ready to ask you a question like, you know, what made you put that stripes on? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so all they want to do is get a reaction. Once they get their reaction, snap, snap, they need you to do something real crazy because that's where they're gonna get their money from. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that to nobody. I didn't want to do that to nobody. Like, this person coming home from work, tired, and I'm all in this person's face asking them ignorant questions and snapping pictures, so. But yeah, I don't got no paparazzi, so I don't want that. <laughs> right, right. Let me go, oh wait, yeah, go ahead. I have a question, what were some of the struggles to becoming what you are now? Um, I think for me it's, it's, it's a journey, so like even though I've been in different um, TV series and one film, I still want to get on the level of Taraji P. Henson and Lupita Nyong'o, like, that's my goal. So right now I feel like I'm still, like, in the struggle, but I'm on the journey. So struggle, um, like he was saying, is finances um, a lot of the time, like, because to build a resume, I, what I told you was what I'm doing, which is building the resume on YouTube, like with videos and stuff like that. But a lot of times they do want to see that you took classes, like went to, that you studied acting in college or something. And I didn't, I studied English and biology. Um, so you could take other workshops, but that's going to cost money. That's a challenge. Um, trying to have enough of a flexible schedule while still trying to make money to pay my bills, but enough of a flexible schedule that I can still go to auditions, that's a challenge. So there's a lot of challenges, but like he was saying, like if it's in you, if it's like something that, what will they say? If you can't stop thinking about it, then don't stop trying to get it done. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and that's something that I can't stop thinking about. So I just continue, I surround myself with people because there was a day that I didn't know him. I've only known him for like a year and a half, two years. So I start surrounding myself with people, vibes off of each other, like support his project, he support my project, and that's how you keep moving forward, you know? So that was a good question. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this, right? Uh, cause this, we, we still, I don't like to call it struggling cause it feel like you uh, just going through a whole lot, but it's a journey and the journey is the most beautiful part about it. And um, you gotta be, man, you gotta be driven and you got to yeah. really love it. I talked to this lady, I ain't gonna say her name, but I asked her to help me with my film. 
She told me, call me next week. I called her next week. She said, oh, I'm walking my dog right now. Call me in two months. Called her in two months. She said, oh, um, I'm playing with my feet right now. Call me in four months. I called her in four months and when I saw her, she wasn't taking me serious. Everywhere I go to, I'm showing them what I'm doing and saying, nope, 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 nope. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm not waiting on nobody to do nothing for me. You should never on everything, never wait for nobody to do nothing for you and never take no for an answer. If you see nobody trying to rock with you and trying to help you, do it yourself. How many of these rappers do you see saying, hey man, I'm just trying to get a team, man. I'm just trying to, do it yourself. Do it yourself and the team gonna come. They're gonna add on because they seeing you doing something. How's somebody gonna help you and you ain't even doing nothing? So yeah. do it, start with yourself. I think she Well, and then yeah, we gonna Nima here still had, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. We're gonna go bow, bow. All right, cool, do that. What he said. Me? Okay. <laughs> um, what was the first film you were in and how was the experience, you know, filming it? Um, so for me, when I first started, I was actually more so in theater, like on stage theater. So that was the first play I was in was My Fair Lady and then Cabaret. And then when I came to Atlanta, I started doing small roles. So that was in the TV series. So I did a role in, um, like I said, Stomp the Yard. Stomp the Yard was the first film that I was in because I was one of the sorority sisters. And so it was just kind of building from there. So that, to answer your question, it would be Stomp the Yard 2. Stomp the Yard 2. Um, but yeah, just kind of. Going from there. Um, my question was, so when you're acting, can, if you do it at a young age, can it affect your grades going back and forth? Cause like, okay, so you're a child and you're in school, but you're trying to balance being an actor. Cause say your acting time is the same time during your school time. Mm -hmm. A lot of um. You gotta be a special type of person to be a child actor. I'm just gonna say that out the door, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and most of the child actors have private school. Yeah. You know, they have it set up like uh, like right now, House. like my cousins and stuff. They don't go to no public school. Like yeah. their parents actually have a set time in which they go over a certain curriculum with right. them. So a lot of that is what the option is, uh, the, what the options are when you are a, uh, a child star is you either have a private school or you have some form of um, house school curriculum so you can still do those studies while going to do your profession. And um, I mean, sometimes parents are so super serious about the child's grades that they're, they're like, it's not an option. It's not an option. Like, you finna do 40% acting and you're gonna do 60% schooling. Or, 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 or 30% acting, you know, the, the school is, is, is gonna take more the lead of it, you know? Gonna go here. So like, so like, what are some tips do you have like for people who are trying to start their own business and stuff? Okay. Um, first thing you need to do is is have a concept. Like, what concept are you willing to pour your money into? What concept are you willing to put everything in? I take that back. I'll make it very simple. Making money is about a problem. Finding whoever got a problem and then finding out how you can solve that problem. Okay. Period. So, people need their hair done. To the end of the world, people gonna always need their hair done. That's a problem. So now you fix the problem by starting you a business that helps people to get their hair done. Then you put a price on it. They pay your price, you get money. So basically, you, you need to know what kind of business are you willing to put your reputation in, your everything in, and then start from that name and branch out. Uh, I, what kind of business would you feel like starting? Oh, a boutique. Oh, for the fashion. Okay. Huh? Oh, it's not. So, what I would have started with, um, with people that do fashion. Well, first of all, a lot of people I know that do fashion, they start off with their drawings first. Do you ever do your draw drawings of different outfits and stuff like that? Okay. And then, huh? Like on this or Exactly, like little sketches in the sketchbook and stuff. And then you could apprentice, like find another fashion designer, even if you reach out to someone on Instagram, social media, Google or something like that here in Atlanta and, you know, see if there's ways that you can help them in their journey, even if it's just to like work in their boutique for like an hour or something, learn how the boutique goes, not an hour, but like a weekend, like a weekend day and just kind of start immersing yourself. So apprenticeship is still a really good way to 
launch yourself from a young age into that industry. Because, I mean, that's basically what I did when I was starting with the um, journalism. I started working with people that already had their magazines out, that already had their shows on TV, on Comcast and everything. So, yeah. Keep a lookout and find people and network. Okay. Uh, I, I'm a substitute here, so I just wanted to add something onto that uh, because I have my my own website where I sell, you know, jewelry that I make. Like I make these earrings, and uh, I know that's a little bit different from the fashion design, but it's kind of still in that ballpark. But as you were saying earlier, don't wait for anybody. You know, go ahead and you start designing something that you can wear because you know your measurements. And then when people see, oh, that's 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 cute or that's bomb or whatever then they will want some of what you have when they see the fashion that you have on. So you wear, you wear, you wear, because I've gotten a lot of people, they're like, well, who made, where'd you get those? And that's because I'm wearing what I make myself. Once people see that, then they want to know where can they get it. Mm -hmm. But if you're just, you know, looking to just work for somebody else and then you never uh, put, put out a demonstration on, on then people will not know. But the last thing I want to say is don't seek fame. You know, once you have a purpose, seek a purpose, because when you have a purpose, that will draw people to whatever you're doing. You know, once you have that, that's all. Well, um, I appreciate y'all time. I appreciate the teacher inviting us out. And I want to say before I leave, you know what I'm saying? If nobody never told you in life that you reported, fam, and, the mo and you're loved by the Most High. You're loved by the Most High, and every single solitary person sitting in this room got something they can do that nobody else can do. Which means that if your life is taken out this planet, whatever you was good at doing, whatever you was finna offer to the world, is now lost. So you add something to this world that nobody ever, your mama can never, ever, ever, ever recreate you. Ever. Even if the same two people got together, they can never make you again. You are unique. So always remember that for the rest of your life that you're valuable. You understand what I'm saying? And that um, all the solutions, the most high got it, and use your mind, not your fists, not stupid stuff, but use your brain, your mind, to accomplish whatever you want to get done. It's the answer to everything. That's real. All right. I guess my last word is that um, we're actually producing a show that deals with the aspect of like finding your purpose, but it focuses on how you can find it through the experiences that you've been through, even if they're painful experiences as well. So it's called Go the Distance. It's on my website. If you guys want to check it out, you can. It's called cherrygarden.tv. Um, yeah, I could actually leave a couple of the flyers here too. And um, I would like to give as a special gift. <laughs> this is my first time I showed my red carpet film here in Atlanta, this film right here. And um, I draw, I love to draw this artist right here. He got a show on Netflix called Skin Wars. He about to get a TV show with uh, Vice, Viceland. So um, I'm honored to have him have drawn this for my film. And I would like to give it to a student here in this classroom. And I want to see who y'all think it should go to. Jeremy. Yeah. Would you be honored, dear artist, because I see you over here doodling, <laughs> to receive? Tell him thank you. Mm. I like my skin. Tell him thank you. Well, you said my skin. You know, the, the, um, the guy on there, he's half white, half black, but he can pass his white. So his, his character actually does things like in the white arena, and they don't know that he's really black. So that's that's part of the story of it. Oh, this you right here? Yes. Oh, turkey sauce. Yeah, it, they put it in macaroni and cheese. That could be the best. Yes, it will be the best with macaroni and cheese. Especially mama on macaroni and cheese. Oh, my oh. God. The worst thing they ever serve at the school was that pasta. It tastes like. Yeah, the worst thing they so serve at the school is every day. It don't garlic. have no taste. It tastes like they didn't dug it out the trash can from the doll. That's death over scraps for the doll. To I'm those of no you doll. that are viewing, please sponsor King Middle School so we can get some better food. <laughs> Please. Please. Did they have, did they have no meat in the, in the spaghetti? No. no. That's so just giddy. That ain't spaghetti. That's just giddy. It did. Yeah. They, <laughs> they probably have some sauce. We just don't taste it right. And then that, was, that tastes like some fake. <laughs> we had to keep it PG for the children. Exactly. Oh, no. Children, <laughs> help your schools nowadays. They need help. They they really do. They New, cooks. New cooks. New cooks. <laughs> Hire my parents. They're real chefs.
they can make food taste good. <laughs> Without I salt and pepper and seasoned salt and all the extra, they could just make it taste better. We're not trying to eat like Karen does. <laughs> so they give y'all plastic forks? Yeah. Yes. I mean, sports. we eat plastic forks at my home. Don't do real civil work. You, you, you touch the sewer and then my for special <laughs> occasion. Um, <laughs> so you know that next to the office. I go home and we say I'm hungry. Like, then they be feeding us too early. Mm -hmm. We go hmm. lunch at like 11.30 and we have like five. Exactly. And then as soon as we get to like school, the next hour, hour they go straight to lunch. lunch. And we be hungry and then they don't spill us to snack in class. Oh, so they don't do like snacks and no. stuff like that? Mm -mm. That's crazy. They don't, they and then we eat late, the so they wonder why we class. snack early in the morning. So, we eat around like 1.30, 1.40. So they take it, mm -hmm. the only people who probably don't get hungry is 7th graders. Because they eat at the correct time. 12, 15. Yeah, that's basically the period. 1 and 2, 12 and 1 o'clock. We eat around 1.30, 1.40. Yeah. And then we just be hungry. That's all it's time now. <laughs> the only thing I can eat from breakfast is dough muffins. The I everything don't else. I, don't, I just don't. Mm -hmm. I'll be, be at home by then. Yeah. Where I can trust the food. Muffins. Yeah. Or I, <laughs> if I eat breakfast, I'm eating some cereal. And my so mom might make some pancakes. Bring snacks. Bring no. You they let us bring the healthy snacks. snacks like like corn chips. And some so y'all don't do pizza? Y'all don't do fries? Ooh, don't don't do pizza be disgusting. Maybe. How can they oh, mess up pizza? Crust. They can they can literally go buy some at Walmart. They, they make me, they, the school lunch fine. makes me sad and <laughs> sad. <laughs> and it makes me want to go jump off a bridge at times. Oh, no. <laughs> you say y'all you say y'all you say, say y'all lunch give us suicidal thoughts. We had to speed out. Can I get your information, please? Can, can I get your information, please? You live down here. What kind of things do you direct? Um, man, documentaries, thrillers, horror, something, do some horror movies. You can make a documentary about me. <laughs> that would not be really fun. It would be pretty boring. It would be pretty boring. <laughs> Are any of y'all married? I think mean, you got a ring on, but it's not on the correct finger, so. All right, you guys. We want to thank you guys for oh coming. Oh, my God. Oh. Exactly. Oh. Thank you, Mary. You know thank you for like, your time. Fam. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. Here's a little yeah. some pillow bag. Oh, my God. Don't cry, <laughs> From Atlanta Public Schools. Don't cry, Don't cry, Don't cry, Don't cry, Don't cry, Don't cry We love you. We love you. Thank you. It's okay. Thank you. 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 And let them all. Oh, you. 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 <laughs> yeah, appreciate all your time, effort. <laughs> we appreciate you, Miss Harrison. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Girl, you can't make yeah, yourself and you don't know where I come from. Back from the home, you okay. you don't know what's up. Stop playing with me. I come from the gutter, you don't know where me. Be like, what's up? Hey man, do some never made when the club. Okay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to look at the shop in this, and we get on people so cut in this. Hey, you don't know where we come from. Hey, hey, you don't know me, Gideon, peace of rock. Spell my name correctly, don't check me. Don't disrespect me, for real, I got the tech G. I'm just playing around, we up at King High. Middle school, for real, you know the rules. Ooh, yeah, I'm sitting here with the freestyle. Just playing around, we're going buck wild. Yeah.